Thank you for tuning in to USA Emergency Broadcasting Network's Prep Academy session. What is USA EBN? Well, USA EBN stands for USA Emergency Broadcasting Network. We are a 24 hour digital broadcasting network designed to bring the general public reliable disaster preparedness information from the professionals, law enforcement officers, firefighters, paramedics, and emergency managers from across the nation. We are a non-government organization bringing the professionals to the microphone to use their training and experience to help save lives. Now the purpose of USA EBN, during any type of emergency or disaster, you and your family lives depend on good advice and sound training. Where do you receive this information nowadays? The anti-government folks trying to make you fearful of the government? Conspiracy nut jobs who see aliens around every corner? Political activists who want to get you on one side of the subject or another? How about salesmen trying to sell you something? Maybe bloggers who know nothing about the field? Or housewives who have never been in a real disaster? No folks, you want to be trained by the professionals people who have been in the field during real disasters. Professionally trained emergency responders. Those who have no hidden agendas to push. Someone who has seen what can happen and will happen in a disaster. Professionals who know how to save a life. Now some of the awards USA EBN has received already. We were the featured article on the FEMA inaugural newsletter, received appreciation letters from the U.S. Congress, FEMA, the Department of Homeland Security. We've been requesting to speak at 9-11 ceremonies around New York City, requested to speak at events in Las Vegas, Atlantic City, and around the nation for preppers and government conferences. We appeared on the Glenn Beck Show as an emergency preparedness professional and appeared on multiple talk radio shows across the nation. Now where do you find USA EBN? At our website www.usaebn.org Spreaker.com Stitcher Radio TuneIn Radio iTunes Blog Talk Radio Facebook and all the other social media outlets there are YouTube, LinkedIn, Digs even Twitter, Google Plus, Android Play Store, and the Apple Store. Now what we offer is 24-hour radio broadcasting to help you learn about disasters. A marketplace for all your su survival needs and equipment. A free mobile app that will help enhance your family communication plan. And a 24-hour emergency operations center always monitoring for a disaster so you will be the first notified. A Disaster Prep Academy for online training and online training conferences. Remember folks, disaster preparedness is as simple as ABC. Always be informed by listening to USA Emergency Broadcasting Network. Build a disaster kit USA EBN Marketplace offers all the equipment and supplies that you'll need for any type of disaster. And create a plan. USA EBN Prep Academy offers the needed training for all your planning needs. And remember, knowledge is power, so research everything before you believe anything. Welcome to Grilling Safety. Some safety facts. On average, $37 million worth of property damage is done per year from the grill. 50% of these fires happen between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. and between the months of May to August. In order to avoid these statistics, keep your grill at least 8 feet from the home or other combustible items to ensure proper ventilation. Charcoal must be kept dry. Wet charcoal can spontaneously combust. Be aware of that. 
Spare propane bottles should be stored in a safe place during grilling time. Basically, don't put spare propane bottles by the hot grill. Keep children and pets away from the grill even after you're done grilling. Grills will maintain heat for a long time. Never put hot ashes in plastic or paper bags. Use only metal containers. You'd be surprised on how many people make this mistake and how many times I've seen paper bags catch on fire. Take it easy on the lighter fluid. Fire can travel up the stream of fluid very fast, then you're the one on fire. Never add charcoal starter fluid when coals have already been ignited. Never use grills or apaches on patios of apartments or condominiums. Look, at this is just unwise. Both you and your upstairs neighbors seem to lose everything. Always supervise a barbecue grill when it is in use or hot. Never grill indoors, not in the house, camper, tent, or any enclosed area. You got carbon monoxide poisoning you have to worry about. Keep the grill out in the open, away from the house, the deck, tree branches. Ah, you got to remember those tree branches. I've seen a lot of that. Or anything that could catch fire. Use the long handle tools especially made for cooking on the grill to keep the chef safe. And always follow the manufacturer's instructions when using grills. Does anyone know where my instructions are? I think that one went out in the trash with the box. Oh, you know what? There's an internet for that. I'll find, I'll find my instructions on the internet. Now pick a safe grilling area. Place your grill on a flat, level surface so it won't tip over. Keep it away from overhangs, fences, deck railings, and shrubbery, shrubbery that can be ignited with a sudden flare-up or flying sparks. Now, grills can get really high in the flame, so you want to you want to make sure. And if you know, after a while, you're going to know what your style of grilling is. If you're one that always gets a high flame, yeah, you want to make sure what's overhead. Position a grill in a well-ventilated location. Never barbecue inside of homes, tents, or vehicles. Burning charcoal inside can kill you. It gives off carbon monoxide, which has no odor. Ah. And keep children and pets away from grill when it's in. Never add lighter fluid directly on hot coals to get a sluggish fire going again. The flames can travel up the stream of fluid and burn you. If coals are slow to start, place several new briquettes in a small metal pan, and you can add lighter fluid to those briquettes, and then use your long tongs to put the, the new coals on the warm coals. Okay, that should ignite them, but if not, you can also use a match, but you don't want to be over the thing when you light it. Never use gasoline or kerosene to light a charcoal fire. Look, at those two items will cause an explosion, okay, because the fumes, the fumes ignite before the liquid. Now, lighter fluid, the chemical, is, the, the chemical mixture is different a bit than gasoline and kerosene. Gasoline and kerosene are highly flammable, the fumes are, so they will ignite long before the liquid does. Do not close the lid until you are ready to cook. Doing so might put out the fire or cause a, a rush of flame when the lid is removed. Closing the lid prematurely can prevent charcoal lighter fluid from completely burning away, which also gives the food a bad or a strange taste. Coals are hot. You can, they can reach up to a thousand degrees. Use insulated flame retardant mitts when cooking or handling any part of the grill. Also, use long handled barbecue tongs or utensils for safe handling of food and coals. Now, what I've done personally is I've got my old welder's mitts. Now, if I can use my, my welder mitts for melting metal, I think I can use it on a barbecue grill. Store briquettes in a cool, dry area of the basement or garage. When charcoal absorbs moisture, it can, it can be hard to ignite, and it can explode, con, con, um, combust. For instant lightened charcoal, keep bag tightly closed to prevent lighter fluid from evaporating. Now, smoking the grill. When smoking meat, pay special attention to the control, controlling internal grill temperature. For an accurate reading, place a candy thermometer probe through the top 
grill vent and maintain a temperature of about 225 to 250 degrees. If the temperature rises above this range, slide the vent directly under the charcoal nearly closed while wearing heat protective gloves. Continue to monitor the heat and open the vent again as the temperature drops. This is how one of the ways you can control the temperature. Now if it does flame up and you start to get a fire, this is how you put it out. Place the cover of the grill, close, close the vents and allow the, the coals to burn out completely. Let the ashes cool for at least 48 hours and then dispose of them in a non-combustible container. Even after 48 hours, coals can reignite. If you must dispose of coals before they're completely cool, remove them individually with long handle tongs and carefully bury them in a can of sand or in a bucket of water. Never pour the hot coals into a pail of water or vice versa. Steam from the briquettes will burn you because it's going to be very hot. Now some do's and don'ts with the propane with propane bottles. Do not smoke while handling the propane cylinders. Common sense here folks. Do not leave the cylinders in your vehicles. It gets hot in your vehicles. Don't use matches or lighters to check for leaks. Okay, and I've seen that done before. Do not allow children to tamper or play with the cylinder or grill. Because usually they leave it on and then when you're least expecting it, you've got a flash out. Do not store, do not use, store, or transport your cylinders where it can be exposed to high temperatures. This includes storing spare cylinders under or near the grill. Let's stay safe, folks, and have a happy summer.